the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hello, welcome back to the Bristol Flyers podcast, proudly sponsored by Web Gains. I'm Joel Osborne. He is Sam Hardy <laughs> as always. And Sam, we are back in our natural habitat of the studio after what was quite possibly my favourite episode we've ever done last week at the British Basketball League All-Star Game. It was hectic. To be fair, being in the studio feels nice because it's a bit more chill. Like We were literally running around meeting all sorts of random people. It was amazing, tiring, loved every second, but glad to be back here with you, Jolie. Yeah, huge shout out to everyone who stopped to chat to us on last week's show. Um, I think what was amazing about the show, um, Sam, was that everyone that featured on the podcast last week could have all easily been a guest as a full length episode. Uh, the thing is, with the guests we had, I would love to do a long episode of each and every one of them. They're all so interesting, got their own little story to tell. Joel, let's make it happen through the summer, boyo. Yeah. And also, I've got to say also, by the way, there were so many people um, that we didn't get a chance to speak to at our All Star episode. I know Drew Lasko wanted to find time to speak to us whilst he was running the sidelines for Sky Sports. Taj Green wanted to chat he, to us, didn't he? He did want to chat to us. Apparently, he's a big listener of the Bristol Flyers podcast. Uh, I know Tahir Hajat wanted to speak to us. Of course, he's uh, he was busy doing his PA bits and bobs throughout the day, so he was super busy. And shout out to all the new listeners as well, by the way, because one thing I didn't realise, you mentioned about Taj Green, I didn't realise how many non-Bristol Flyers fans are actually listening to the Bristol Flyers podcast right now. Even though we're super biased about the Flyers. Yeah, well, hopefully we make Flyers your new favourite team <laughs> uh, to all our new listeners. And shout out to all the new uh, listeners and watchers on uh, on YouTube and make sure if you do enjoy the podcast uh, share it with a friend let them know about the Bristol Flyers podcast it's not just for Bristol Flyers fans but we might just convince you to become a new fan on the way uh, got producer Dan back with us this week Dan how are you sir very well thank you but also insanely jealous that I didn't get to go to All Star Game with you boys it looked great it yeah. looked really really good uh, y you took a rare week off from podcast duty I know I didn't know what to do with myself it was, it was yeah I said what I ended up doing was listening to the podcast so there you go I ended up listening to what you guys produced I thought it was very good very yeah. interesting chat with but Aaron you... Raiden by the way oh it was a very good chat with Aaron Raiden we want to get him on for a full length episode at some point um, but I, I did my best producer Dan impression and edited the whole thing together. Nice. What did you think? It was good. You did good. You did very, very well, Joel. Well done. Do you, uh, do you know what's weird? And I don't know if you're the same, Joel. Well, obviously not because you edit it, but I um, I rarely listen back to these podcasts, but I did listen to that one because I was really interested to hear what was going on. Barely could hear of how loud it was in the copper box. So yeah, loved every second. Dan, we did miss you though, um, but... I don't know, didn't need you. That's, that's okay. Well, well, I'm sure there'll be another time where I can come on the road with you guys, right? Of course. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, sure. yeah of course. Yeah, 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 we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see you I there. can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So massive thanks to everyone that helped us make our All-Star Game episode possible. If you haven't had a chance to go check it out yet, do go listen back on the podcast feed. Because like I say, it's probably one of my personal favourite episodes of the, uh, well, since we started, really. The probably favourite episode yet. Uh, we could top that this week because uh, Sam, you'll notice if you're watching on YouTube, Sam and I are wearing uh, our best basketball jerseys. Sam's got his Thicky Rubio jersey on, Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, shout out Thicky Rubio. And I'm wearing my authentic MJ. And that is because uh, today is our official jersey rankings episode. So I think it's about time uh, that we introduce this week's guest. Coming up on this week's show, it's the return of the Hoopin' and Lutin official British basketball jersey rankings. And uh, and here to join us in studio is our resident expert of all things basketball jerseys, none other than Elliot Wade uh, are from our partners at Hoopin' and Lutin, owner of Hoopin' and Lutin. Elliot, welcome back to the podcast. It's great to be here. It's been too long, but it's what? wonderful to be back. What has it been, like a year? Well, we literally had you on last week at the All-Star Pod, <laughs> by the way. So. Right, actually, yeah. <laughs> been all of uh, seven days. <laughs> yeah. um, Elliot, how's it going? You made a trip down from Manchester today have, to join us. Yeah, I had a uh, joyful drive down the motorway. No traffic. There wasn't much traffic. I experienced all four seasons. You know. Oh, oh yeah, it's been hailing today, hasn't it? Oh, my Hail, God. We, we had sun in Manchester. It was... First time for everything. Raining, <laughs> raining through the Midlands, raining like past Birmingham, Leicester, same. Of course, last week we actually caught up with you. You were part of our All Star uh, episode um, last week. I had a brief conversation with you. Um, overall thoughts on the day? You enjoy it? It was brilliant. Um, I think I've said it to a few people. It was probably the most fun that I've had at a official basketball game. Um, I don't think it was reflected on TV how wet it was because you couldn't see what was going but it i think matt hardy described it right that it, it was just a festival yeah i think everyone had a genuinely brilliant time 
the predictable. If you haven't seen the podcast, go and watch it. Uh, once again, Elliot's predictions come correct. <laughs> Old people moan about no defense, but uh, <laughs> that I saw so many comments about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Elliot, of course, on that on that All Star episode, we mentioned we should probably get you back in at some point to do our Hooping and Luton jersey rankings episode. I don't think realize how uh, how soon it would be because we're doing it the following week. Exactly, it's almost <laughs> as if we're organised and know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, every plan made in the last minute here on the Bristol Flyers podcast. But we move um, very shortly indeed, and on the episode we are going to be going through through every single jersey in the British Basketball League and a couple extras um, this season. And we're going to do Elliot's official rankings of the jerseys. We're going to be putting them in order. Uh, no holds barred today, right? No holds barred. No holds barred. You're going to upset a few people today, right? Hey, you might. You might make some people a bit happy as well. Not not like me to rumble a few feathers, is it? <laughs> and before, we, uh, and before we, we have to do a disclaimer here. This is the official Hooper and Luton jersey rankings, not the official Bristol Flyers jersey rankings. Sam and I are just here to assist and provide the platform and offer a couple of opinions, but the ultimate decision comes down to Elliot, okay? So before you um, get your Twitter fingers ready, um, you can fire them Elliot's way. So if there's, <laughs> if there's any old people here who hate people not playing defence, you can blame Elliot, not there, us. There's, okay? there's no Michael Jordan jersey. <laughs> There. there we go, exactly. Okay. Um, Elliot, before we dive into our uh, official jersey rankings, uh, we've got to talk about the business because um, we have a lot, lot of new listeners here on the Bristol Flyers podcast. Um, this is your second season of being an official elite sponsor to the Flyers. Your company logo is on the back of our home and away shorts once again this year. Uh, for completely new listeners who have no idea what Hooper and Luton is, give us the rundown. Uh, yeah, so I run Hooping and Luton, which is uh, the UK's number one basketball jersey destination. Got the tagline in there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so basically... You said that once the, or twice before, right? The, uh, the basic form of what I do is I sell uh, basketball jerseys from all over the world. Uh, everything officially licensed. Started off as a little hobby. Couldn't find a basketball jersey of my own. Uh, we're now four years old um, and approaching 5,000 orders in that time. <laughs> Um, so yeah, jerseys from all, all over. It started because they were so hard to get. I wanted a jersey myself, couldn't find one. Um, so started building up the business from there. Just uh, a lot of time researching what's real, what's fake, what's wanted, what isn't. Um, and then choosing how I wanted to run the business, which was that everything's under retail. Um, doing drops where everything goes on the site at the same time. So every single person has the equal opportunity to get the jersey they want. It's not backdoored, it's not going down the sneaker route where I'm going to charge you £700 for a, for a mid pair of trainers. You know, everyone gets the same chance. And, it, and it's just grown and grown and grown. And as that's grown, I've got more into British basketball. The sponsorship started with the Flyers. Um, I've started branching out and doing various other things, um, having a voice on British basketball, what I feel I can help sponsorship was important because it's having an accountability um in british basketball actually putting money back into the game um to seeing where you think you can help in a way and actively doing something about it um but i love every part of it i love what i do the life i've created from doing it one thing we've missed actually so far in this podcast joe we haven't had a yes yes people what do you mean it's what Elliot says at the start of every single video. Oh, he yeah. Does. Oh, yeah. How do we? If you watch any, any, any of Elliot's uh, lives on Instagram, every time he does this, he sort of sits in his chair and he like starts with his back to the camera. He turns around and he goes, Yes, yes, people. <laughs> Welcome to the Hoop and Loot and uh, Drop. He does a little weird thing. I wouldn't say it's quite like that. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 people. Less, <laughs> less creepy than that, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, uh, do the wink as do you wink as well? Don't you? Can you give us one to camera three over there? So sort of you know you start turn around. See, people think that it's easy, you know, but there's a countdown when you go on live. So it goes three, two, one. Yeah. And then you should go live. Yeah. But it actually goes three, two, one. Checking connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes one hundred percent. Signal is weak. So then you actually like turn around and goes bloop, bloop, bloop. Yes, yes, people. <laughs> Amazing, yes, yes, people. I've actually only ever seen it on a replay because I've never joined in, in time, but whenever you've done it live, so I've had to um, just only seen it when I've watched it back, but I love it. Elliot, just before we uh, dive into our, our news uh, segment, um, tell us about the store in Manchester and sort of the direction you're looking to go in now with the business moving forward. Are you looking to continue to grow as a business? Yeah, well, the, the, um, 
the shop I opened up in November. It was quite a quick move. Um, so it's just by the Etihad Stadium. It's two tram stops away from uh, Manchester Piccadilly. It's going to be brilliant in the summer. So it's it's a converted shipping container. It's with about 150 others, so all different types of small business, jewellery makers, uh, nail bars, Italian ice cream is next door to me. In the summer, there's a nice open spot, so there's going to be 2K tournaments. You know, People can just come in, come along as you like, and it's a really nice spot to be. It's just, you know, it's a bit bougie. It's something which you don't often see. Well, the shop is uh, open in Manchester, so when you have Manchester, go do go check yes. it out. Um, and if you can't make it to Manchester, hoopandluton.com. There's a drop coming this Friday. There's drops every Friday at the moment. Ellie Wonka is my name, and I, I am part of the Drop Factory. So every Friday at 7 p.m., there is new jerseys going onto the site, including some Authentics. Yeah, I got my eyes on them, so if anyone's looking at the Authentics, please back off and let me buy them. Thank you very much, um, because I'll be snatching up what at least one of them. At least one of them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go check it out, uh, and at nluton on X. Uh, Instagram is at Hoopin and Luton. Um, so go, do go follow. Uh, keep on track with when the drops are coming because he's always posting about it. Go check out the lives on Instagram. Uh, it tells you exactly all the sizes before they come out as well. Um, so yeah, go check it out if you haven't already. We are going to get to our jersey rankings very, very soon. But first, Sam, we've got to get through the latest news. So it's time for us to get, get to the news. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Hey, Flyers fans. This is the part of the show where we give a huge thank you to our podcast sponsor web gains we've got rob over there in the house and uh, without their support this podcast would not be possible now web gains is the smart affiliate marketing network who have an unbelievable track record when it comes to empowering advertisers and publishing partners to reach their potential and achieve game changing results they connect businesses with top affiliates who can promote your products and services reaching a wider audience and driving more revenue and here's the best bit, Flyers fans. WebGains provides you with detailed reports and analytics to track the performance of your affiliate marketing campaigns, making it easy to see the results of your hard work and investments. But don't just take our word for it. Here's Rob from WebGains to tell you more. Did you know that last year affiliates helped sell 12 billion worth of products for British brands? And every one pound spent on affiliate marketing by advertisers also known in our channel as retailers, returned an average of £12.40. That is actually crazy when you spend £1. You get £12 <laughs> you get back. £12.40 back. It's so good. It's, it's good amazing. It's a good deal, isn't it? And not only are web game sponsors of the Bristol Flyers podcast, but their company logo is also once again on the front of our home and away playing shorts, inspiring the team to make smarter connections, just like they do for thousands of brands on their international affiliate network. So if you're ready to skyrocket your online presence and drive more sales, visit webgains.com and see how they can assist you in the world of affiliate marketing. That's webgains.com, W-E-B-G-A-I-N-S.com. Give your business the assist it needs with Webgains Affiliate Network. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Are you stealing my lines there, Sam? I know. I, I, I wanted Joel to do it this whole time and I just, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd go with it. Well, you stole it this week. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Uh, here's a look at what's been going on around the British Basketball League and beyond over the past week. Uh, we didn't talk about this on last week's show, Sam, because obviously we were at the All-Star Game and it was before the game even took place. But uh, the Flyers' European campaign came to an end last week out in Lithuania as they fell to BC Cholet in the uh, second leg, 90 points to 79. Oh, don't, it doesn't quite do it justice. To be fair, we went down early. We went down early and it was... Um, I'm not going to lie, it was frustrating, and quite early on I was like, what are we doing? But mm. actually, we got back to within, we actually got to, we didn't ever quite be winning, did we? By uh, we aggregate. Were, we trailed by one on aggregate one, in the third yeah. quarter, so I'll sort of run you through it really quickly. Cholet won the aggregate game by 19 points. The final score in the tie was 90 to 79. Um, Flyers, they rallied back, you know, they were down in a big hole early on, trailed by as many as 20 odd points on aggregate. They rallied back, Levi Bradley's mid-range jumper made it a one-point game on aggregate, trailing by one. We had them right where we wanted them, and then um, straight out the next time out, Polos Danis Avicius, a uh, pair of back-to-back -back threes, they extended their lead back on aggregate. Uh, they tied the game on the night, and then they sort of ran away with it in the fourth. Um, can I just talk about this, by the way? Um, four straight travelling violation calls in the fourth quarter. Did you watch this? 
I I cannot tell you. It it, it it I don't know even what to say, Joel, because those were not travels. Okay, maybe one of them was a travel, but I don't think they're normal travels. I, okay, here's my opinion of it. All right, if you're going to call this travel, call it at the start of the game. Yeah. Because it sets the tone for the rest of the game. Like, if you know that they're being very... Like, every every game or every season, the refs are hot on something. So whether it's landing space or whether it's the travel or whether it's lifting... You know what I mean? So basically what they're saying for a new listener to basketball, um, basically they were saying our players were not putting the ball down on the floor before they lifted their back pivot foot up, which is why the travel was called you know, on that first step. Um, four in a row there were. Um, down the fourth quarter stretch without it being called all game long. So um, obviously it's a big talking point. I know a lot of fans weren't happy with the you know the, the, the officiating down the stretch. And, and here's something else I kind of want to talk about here. And this look this looks like me bashing. I'm not bashing here. I'm just, we're just we're we're here to create a conversation around this. I kind of want to talk about this, Sam. Um, and I know and, what you're going to talk about. Uh, and that is between the first leg and the second leg. Cholet signed American guard Sean Armand, right? So he didn't play. He wasn't a he wasn't a Cholet player bef- during the first leg. They signed him in between the first leg and the second leg, right? Yes. He played in the first quarter. He had double figures. I think he had eleven points in the first quarter. Three threes. Some deep. Some he's decent, by the way. Some deep threes, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, but obviously, most leagues, or even the British Basketball League, there's a signing deadline. So you can't sign players after X date to stop teams from bringing in. I don't know. Let's bring in an NBA player for the playoffs and try and win the whole thing. But at the moment in the NBA, there's no rule that stops teams from bringing in a player. Like there's Final Fours coming up very soon. Play- teams could bring in a player and then sign them for like a two game contract and they could play the Final Fours. Uh, but uh, what what a journey it's been though, by the way. Just to say like first season playing European competition, <coughs> no one had any idea how any of the British teams would get on in this competition, including Newcastle. Both Bristol and Newcastle making the quarterfinals. Flyers, they finished with a record of four and five overall in the competition. Incredible, massive learning experience for everyone. It's been a pleasure to be a part of. Um, everyone can be super proud of how far they've gone in the competition, and it was really good fun. It was super fun having midweek games. I thought yeah, I, I really was. liked looking forward to that. Uh, it was a different atmosphere. We, we could almost bring in a different fan base a little bit as well because yep. there's people who had the opportunity to to buy tickets who've never seen Flyers before. So I thought it was amazing, Joel. Yeah, Elliot, I know you've been a big advocate for British teams in European competition this season. Absolutely, and I think with yesterday, that's six. 67 games which UK teams have played in Europe this season and uh, I did a little bit of uh, research last week a completely pointless stat but there were 60 so last week we played 66 games in 2012-13 there were 66 games in the NBA so our winning record for UK teams would have put us at number three seed in both the Eastern and Western Conference there we go Uh, so that gives you an indication of, of how well all of the teams have performed in Europe, and it's, it's been incredible to watch. I mean, it's, it's a great thing for British basketball. Yeah. So, um, of course, um, Flyers' European journey came to an end. One thing we missed, though, was if you watched the second leg on Flyers TV, you would have seen Producer Dan's final package of the season. Isn't that right, Dan? Yep, and it's a big one. It is a big one. Uh, Dan loves getting his package out on the podcast, and I think it's only right. You know, we've run them on the podcast. I know the series has already taken place, so, you know, we were down by eight at the time, so reference in the, the package. But, Producer Dan, shall we play your package for one final time this season? Oh, why not? Here it is. Who's ready for a trip into Europe for ENBL hoops? I can't hear you! Shole is situated in Lithuania and is the country's fourth largest city with a population of just over 100,000. However, before I go any further, I have to tell you, this one was a real struggle to write. This is a very quiet area of the Baltics, so forgive me if I don't inspire you to travel here straight away. What I can tell you is a good meeting place in the centre of Sholay is the Sholay Cockerel Love Clock. I said love clock. When the cockerel was first introduced, it would actually spread its wings and sing every hour, but it ran out of steam some time ago, so now people just meet there. An actual Sholay saying is, see you at the cock. I'm not even kidding. I'm a peacock! You gotta let me fly! 
Famous people from Cholet include MMA fighter Marius Zaromskis, basketball player Robertas Yavotkas, selected by the San Antonio Spurs in 2001 but never actually played a game for them, and film director Sarunas Bartas. He made the film Seven Invisible Men, but no one saw it. When it comes to museums, I think Cholet likes its variety. We've got the Bicycle Museum, the Railway Museum, the Cat Museum and the Photography Museum, but may I recommend a little trip outside of Cholet to the Hill of Crosses. And what you'll find there is a small hill with around 150,000 crosses crisscrossing the top of it. No one knows why it started, but today most see it as a chance to pay tribute to lost ones, including the Pope himself. On to tonight's challenge and Cholet Basketball Club, probably the third biggest team in Lithuania. They are three-time BBL champions, that's Baltic Basketball League to you and me. Averaging 2,000 fans for their home games, the support will be there tonight. So the Flyers are against the odds for sure, but gentlemen, while we may be eight points down, the fire in our bellies will not be diminished, for we are the Bristol Flyers. Many have tried and many have failed to break our spirit. We never give up and we will never surrender. <coughs> Bit much? Yeah. Come on, the Flyers. Well, <laughs> there you have it. Bowing out of the EMBL with Dan's best package yet. A bit much? Yes, Dan. A, a, a <laughs> lot it? much. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. What, you can do more, can you? <laughs> I think so. I, I don't know. Winston Churchill and the RAF were enough on that. I'm not sure. <laughs> and the love clock, of course. Yeah. Yep. The, the important clock. <laughs> Careful. Uh, so, so there we go. Um, well, Dan, that it turns out it was our last package of the season. So um, we really appreciate you putting together these packages <laughs> for the podcast, by the way, because it certainly has made the podcast um, a lot more fun, isn't it, Sam? Well, have you enjoyed doing it, Dan? I've really enjoyed doing it. Yeah, apart from Pleven. But yeah. <laughs> that was a struggle. But all the other places, there's some really good places in Europe that you just don't know about. And that, to be honest, to be serious the EMBL has helped with that in terms of the basketball but also these places and discovering more about their passion for basketball and stuff like that is yeah it's been interesting yeah. what what a quote there are really good places in Europe that you've never heard about <laughs> I'm going to get that printed on t-shirt yeah. for you Dan <laughs> yeah, we, you can, how uh, British of me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to not recognise anyone else. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Other news to get to, by the way. Um, big weekend for Flyers this weekend. Of course, Southwest Derby on Saturday night, 8 pm tip off against the Patriots. Up the Flyers. Um, a huge one. Yep, yeah, big game coming up. Um, and then on Sunday, second game of back to back, we go back to Cheshire looking to avenge last week's defeat to the Phoenix. The Flyers, uh, they can secure their place in the British Basketball League playoffs this weekend if results go their way. Essentially, uh, they need two results to go their way. The results they're looking for are either a Flyers win or a Manchester Giants loss. Sorry, Elliot. Because um, Elliot's a big Manchester <laughs> Giants fan. Um, but um, basically, um, any two, any combination of two will put us in the playoffs. So two Manchester Giants losses or two Bristol Flyers wins or a Bristol Flyers win combined with a Manchester Giants loss will put us in the postseason. Who have Manchester got this weekend? Easter Monday, they take on Sheffield Sharks at home. Uh, uh, so we, they're only playing one game? Just the one game for them okay. this weekend. We have the two. Quick reminder, by the way, don't forget, you can watch both of the Bristol Flyers games this weekend for free on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Tickets for the, uh, the Plymouth game are completely sold out. Uh, also, Sam, the tickets are sold out for every home game for the rest of the regular yes. season for Bristol Flyers. So you can't buy any more tickets. We got nothing left. <laughs> I should have done the sound. You should have done the sound. Uh, I, was I wasn't even thinking. We've got, um, no we got nothing left. I've got nothing left. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> so we've got nothing left. Uh, so uh, if you wanted to get tickets for the regular season, uh, they're gone. Other, other news to get to, Sam. Flyers 3x3. The Flyers are hosting two 3x3 tournaments this Easter at the SGS College Arena for the juniors to get involved with. Full details about this are on the Bristol Flyers website right now, but the first tournament is on Tuesday, April 9th, and that is for under 12s and under 14s, all abilities, boys and girls. The second one is Thursday, April 11th for under 16s and under 18s so there is something for kids of all ages to get involved with um, this Easter holiday it costs just £50 to enter a team for either tournament each team gets a minimum of four games all games played in the 3x3 format and head to the Bristol Flyers website right now to book your place and find out more details there you go 
And that's it for this week's news. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. This episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast is fueled by Cacto Drinks, uh, the refreshing natural hydration drink that aids our players' recovery throughout the basketball season. Sam, just so happens to see on the desk right here, we have a couple of Cacto drinks in our hand. This one I've got here is the Californian Dream, which is made from prickly pear juice, uh, made with natural ingredients, Sam. I find it really, I love it. Um, For me, when it says made from prickly pear juice, I feel like they're just adding the prickly for fun, but I know that is a legitimate like fruit, but it sounds like, oh, the prickly pear juice, but it is my favorite one to read out at the um, announcing job because it is so funny to say the desert's best kept secret and i'm very excited to say it every time yeah i don't think there are many uh, secrets in a desert uh, but uh cat day drinks is definitely the desert's best kept secret just dan what other se- uh, secrets are there out there in the desert i can't think of any there can't be many i ask indiana jones he'd know it's hot that's so, a lot of secrets you know what? some people don't know this though at night time it can get really flipping cold too cold actually joel but you didn't know that as a desert's kept secret for you. There we go. So we've got Cacto right here in the studio. Sam and I are going to crack them out. And while we do, have a listen to this. Oh, that sounds amazing. Cheers, mate. Oh my God, that's oh unbelievable. My God. What flavour is that? Prickly pear. Yeah, well, with what? Californian is just... Dream it is, oh. made from prickly pear juice. That's that outrageous. That is delicious, Joel. Under 100 calories per can, high in electrolytes and low in sugar, ideal for the slow release of energy. I know for a fact, Sam, our players, uh, we go on the team bus on the way back from a game, there's loads of cacto laid out there for the players to enjoy. Lots of important minerals, such as magnesium, potassium, and calcium, uh, all highly beneficial for recovery. It's a super refreshing drink for your day-to-day if you want to drink it in the office, but the magnesium in it in particular helps with preventing players from getting cramp as well. High in plant-based fibre, natural ingredients, prickly pear is one of the lowest sugar fruits on earth. Now, Jolly, one thing I like to do with my friend, which might sound silly, is we, uh, we if we're drinking something, we read the back and see what it says, and I start the sentence, and you've got to try your best to make up or guess what it says on the actual drink. Okay. Are you happy to play? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So this one is the description of it. So prickly pears are remarkable fruit. Ah, oh, nearly plants. Oh. Yeah, no, good. That's very good. There we go. Deliciously sweet, sugar-free, and a great source of energy. Mmm, potassium. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> if you want to go try some of uh, Cacto for yourself, it's available online. You can also follow them on Instagram. It's at Cacto Drinks Co. Uh, if listeners want to order online, the website is cactodrinks.com. That's cactodrinks.com. C-A-C-T-O-D-R-I-N-K-S dot com. Head to the website and try yours now. Made from prickly pear juice, the desert's best kept secret. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Right, you've listened to the starter. This is the main course. Mm. This is what everyone has come for. Here's how it's going to work. We've put together our tier list. Producer Dan can get the tier list up on the screen behind us. We've managed to put together uh, five categories. Uh, We're going to go through every single team's jerseys this season. We're going to put them in the category. Uh, the top category is in the Louvre. Hang it in the Louvre, which will be basically means that's a really nice jersey. That's very, very, very nice. Uh, then we've got nice, which is a good jersey. The third tier is bang average. So it's a jersey that is uh, not great and not bad. The uh, second bottom tier is we've called must try harder and the bottom tier is in the bin uh, which is the jersey that deserves to be thrown away I, l- I would have liked it if you'd call it dans le poubelle because you've got French at the top and French at the bottom oh, that yeah. would have been good or we could call it send it to Plymouth <laughs> oh, that, that, oh, it's quite happily going to send it to Plymouth send we, we ran out of room <laughs> for send it to Plymouth send it to Plymouth there we go. <laughs> you guys are so mean. Uh, so, oh. th- so those are our tiers. We've got 25 jerseys to get through. So uh, this is going to be uh, fun. Producer Dan, I think uh, because it was All-Star weekend last weekend, we should probably start by looking at the All-Star jerseys. What do you think? Sounds good to me. Are you ready for All-Star North? Here we go. So here's a look at the British Basketball League All-Star Team North jersey. Uh, for the listener, okay, so i got to do my little perfect um, 
audio description here for the podcast listener. <laughs> for the podcast listener, this is a light blue jersey with a logo in the middle of the jersey. It says All Star North with a big British Basketball League All Star logo in the middle, the big star in the middle. Also, it has the number 21 of Aaron Rye sporting this lovely jersey. The number is in the top right corner and the Kappa yeah. logo is in the top left. There are, there are, there's a light blue colour with dark blue stars in the background. Why have you... What is <laughs> that? It's just audio description, isn't it? You know, yeah. your audio description. <laughs> but you went through three different accents. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you well, made it proper like ASMR for the listener. For the listener, we have a light blue jersey with stars in the middle. Yeah, yeah I liked it, Josh. So this is the All-Star North jersey. Uh, what do we reckon of the All-Star North jersey, folks? Where's it going? It, it's nice, but it's an All-Star game. Yeah. It's... This is very generic. There's, there's, it's okay, but like I say, it's all star. We're taking a risk with the all star as it is. This is going to be aimed at kids to buy. Make it something mad. To give my sort of two pence worth, we spoke about this in the podcast last week. I wasn't a massive fan of how it was sort of dark blue versus light blue at the all star game. It can get a bit confusing, right? I think uh, you, you. I mean, I agree. They weren't atrociously different. They were like, you could tell the difference, but I think we should have done wilder colours, 100% agree. Maybe like a yellow or something like that, potentially. And the, I, I, love I the don't dark like, blue any, like I don't like anyone who wears a yellow jersey, okay? <laughs> anyone. <laughs> Elliot sat there in his yellow jersey. <laughs> That's exactly why I wear it. But I didn't say it because I was waiting for the second picture to come up, but you may as well put them both together and judge them as one jersey. Yeah, show us the Team South then jersey, producer Dan, there it is. So for the listener, the uh, Team South jersey is better basically a dark blue version of the Team North jersey. There are even darker stars faded in the background with a logo in the middle. I, I think I actually prefer this one, though. I do. I think the colours oh, are nicer. I agree. Yeah, that's the better of the two. But I agree. like I say, it's it, it's not a bad jersey. Don't get me wrong. But like <laughs> I say, when you're doing an, an all-star event, do something wild. Try something. Take a risk. Because it's a one-off game. Mm-hmm. If people don't like it, they're not going to like it. And that's what you want with jerseys, is you want them to be Marmite. So you want people to either love them or hate them, so it creates conversation. Those jerseys there, every single person has said the same thing. Oh, they're not bad. Mm. But that's that, that ends the conversation there. So you want to take a risk and do something outlandish. Get Like I say, you want people to hate them, you want people to like them. Uh, let's get our jersey rankings on the screen then. Uh, where is the All-Star North and All-Star South jerseys going on our lovely big board behind us, Elliot? Well, I got it wrong. I thought must try harder was in the middle, so it's bang average. So, are you putting both in bang average? Yep, yeah, because it's the same jersey. So, you the can, North... can you overlap them? <laughs> <laughs> so, Team North and Team South go into our bang average category, and we're off and underway with our official jersey rankings. What have we got next, producer Dan? Well, next up we have uh, Caledonia Gladiators. Away. Ooh, away. The Cali Glads. <laughs> what are we saying with this one? This is the Caledonia Gladiators away jersey. Uh, baby blue it says the word gladiators across the front. The number is just below. Uh, the Caledonia Le- uh, Gladiators logo, the sort of swoosh basketball, is just above that. Uh, and then there's a sponsor in the top right corner, which I think is the University of West Scotland. Don't miss out on the slight tartan down the side, Joel, which mm. I actually think mm. is a nice little touch on that. I do think that's a nice touch. I agree. I'm going to tell you right now, I think the jersey's a bit boring, but I think the nice down the side, the tartan is smart. That's what I think. Have a one of the sabre swords or something like yeah, yeah i agree i think like really... play on the gladiators a bit more exactly. right exactly give us a big sword give us like a, the more tartan do you know what i mean yeah which is really surprising because they've done everything brilliantly up there when they won the trophy last year you know bringing out the national sword and everything with the new arena and everything again you're hearing what i'm saying here go bold that's not that's a that's a generic jersey with a safe touch added on it yeah there's a lot of baby blue influence this season in yeah, british basketball jerseys it's, isn't there? it's like they've taken surrey scorchers jersey yeah and just added a bit of tartan on it from last year <laughs> there you go that's it in the nutshell right where's the away jersey going on our lovely leaderboard or should we do the first should we, should we do the well, home i've, I've well? got the home kit for you now the, the caledonia gladiators home jersey cool let's see the home jersey uh producer dan and this is essentially it's it's very similar it's got white trim around the top and the the size is this one's a much darker blue and it does have the tartan from the elbow down to the bottom of the jersey underneath the armpit i love I pre- much, much prefer this colour jersey. It's a deep, rich Agreed. blue, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I like it's it. Scottish blue, isn't Scottish it? Scottish flag. You know what I mean? That, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. what I'm saying. I thought the, the light blue, 
let, let's not get into colours of flags. Yeah. We'll, we'll avoid that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> why, Elliot? <laughs> the, um, the, very, I very topical I with England. I don't <laughs> understand why it's the conversation, but anyway. Um, yeah, the darker blue is so much better. It looks like, and I noticed the gladiators a lot more on there. It makes me look at the font from, going from bigger to larger, which is yeah. consistent with their branding. So let's get our big board up on the screen behind us. And uh, we've got to put Caledonia Gladiators up onto here. So where are we going to put the home and the away jerseys, Elliot? Home for me is going to go in... Uh, sorry, which is home? Home is the dark blue. Okay, the home one can go in nice. Nice. Because it nice. just all works together. I agree with that. I do think that is very nice indeed. And the, the away one... The away one must try harder. Yeah. Ooh. I kind of I kind of agree with that one, I think. Um, coming up next, we have the Cheshire Phoenix. First of all, let's talk about the home jersey. Now, it looks great. However, this is a direct ripoff of the Phoenix Suns. They have literally copied Phoenix Suns and pasted it onto their jersey design. There's no Cheshire Phoenix logo on the Cheshire Phoenix jersey. So without looking at that straight away and noticing British Basketball League, it looks like a knockoff Phoenix Suns jersey. You're forgetting, Joel, that in the picture we have poster boy Aaron Rye. <laughs> Chill, bro. Anyway, that's my, that's my rant over it. That's my rant of the week over it. I should have British basketball beef on this one today. I'll tell you that for a fact. Well, that's the Cheshire Phoenix home jersey. Um, uh, let's have a look at the Cheshire Phoenix away jersey. And this is a flip reverse of the colour scheme. White with a bit of orange, bit of orange and blue. Um, I like the or I, I do like the orange addition to Cheshire. I like, I like to see him do an orange kit. Go on, go on Dan, talk well, to me. I was going to say, I have to say, isn't this... Very similar to the Cheshire Phoenix home jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say. Yeah, lick and paste. Right? It is. That's what you do with home and away, though. You flip the colours, don't you? That's Same it. model and everything. <laughs> <laughs> the Cheshire Phoenix Suns. <laughs> I don't mind that. I like so that. Where, where, are we putting, <laughs> where are we putting the Cheshire Phoenix Suns, then? What are we saying? No, I think they're both nice. They're both nice? Yeah, I prefer the white one. Yeah, I'd, I'd, um, yeah. But yeah. I think they're both nice. I think they're good. I think they're good designs. Okay, well, it's my turn to get opinionated <laughs> on the next kit. What we got, Dan? Well, I think you will, Sam, because next up is Leicester Riders. Oh, and yeah. Leicester Riders home first. I can't get my head around this logo because every time I see that, I just want to go to Hungry Horse <laughs> and order a 30-ounce steak for three pounds. Tell you what, I, I think they have taken a lot of abuse about their two logos this year, Joel, haven't they? Yeah, I tell you what, though, I, I'm not a fan of their new logo. However, I like the fact they've got the old logo on the home jersey. Um, the jersey there was modelled by Teddy Allen. It's a bright red colour, classic red colourway. The Leicester Riders classic word mark on the front. The number sits just below. Jelson Holmes is the sponsor there's like a darker trim on the uh the top and the side of the jerseys which i quite like actually i think it's quite a classic kind of look um is that gradient towards the bottom where it's a bit darker than the top or is that just me is that just a photo it might just be a light I thing i think that i know th you're right I it could be a gradient. a gradient yeah. yeah i think this is a very smart jersey for your home jersey i think um it, it works very well Tell you what, Teddy Allen looks really happy about wearing it as well. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. <laughs> Elliot, what are your thoughts on Leicester Riders' home jersey? I, I like it. Like I say, once I've got over my own uh, uh, association with the logos, I I much prefer that. Um, I know a lot of people don't, but I actually prefer the new logo. One personal preference is, uh, is I'd have the sponsor up a little bit higher. I was going to say the same. The yeah. Um, but again, that's a personal preference. You know, if someone's paying... X amount of money to have it exactly there, then take the money. Um, but yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah. Um, Let's have a look at the away jersey then, shall we? Because the away jersey is a little bit different. There are pinstripes on this one, and our lovely new Leicester Riders logo is situated front and centre. It's not particularly big. I reckon you'd probably want to make that logo a bit bigger on that jersey uh, if it's right in the middle. But essentially, for the listener, this is a um, a white and sort of dark, uh, light grey, pinstriped jersey. The word Leicester is in the classic Leicester word marking across the middle with the number just below. The sponsor, again, it's quite low on this one. It's got red trim around the top and the sides. Um, this logo has taken a lot of slack. I've seen some um, BoJack Horseman references to it um, since they announced the rebrand. What are your thoughts on the Leicester Riders Away jersey? I don't know why I dislike it. It's, yeah. I think it's the grey and white when you do gray 
Um, so you've got ones like this, which is a Portland Trailblazers. Right now, it's almost silver yep. with silver things. That now, when you go in grey with jerseys, I think I mentioned it last year. You either go silver, which seems classy and high, or it's PE kit grey. Mm. Like, and, and again, that's something in my head when I'm just looking at it, and it it just doesn't excite me. Like I say, I like people to be bold with jerseys, and it's it's my head is telling me that's a nice jersey. But then it's probably my heart saying I don't really like that. So I'm I'm not sure on this one. So you two guys can convince me either way. All right. Well, let's get the big board up on the screen behind us and let's talk about where we should put Leicester Riders. Uh, the home jersey. I'm uh, inclined to put it in nice. I think it's a very nice jersey. I, I I don't know if anyone's got any objections to that. No. Sam shaking his head. Elliot, what are your thoughts? My it, for me, it would be between average and nice. Um, I just think there's a couple of placement issues, but I'm happy for it to be in nice. Why don't we put it top of bang average? Put it top of bang average? Do you want no, because I think it's better than I, that. I, I, do I think, think, it, it, yeah. I think it's better than that. Uh, I, what about bo bottom of nice then, yeah. where it yeah, is? Bottom, bottom of, of nice. nice. Yeah, let's do that. So the home, the home jersey goes into our nice category. Uh, the away jersey... See, I think it's must try harder because I think it's got a lot of potential. Yeah. But I just don't think the execution is as good as it could have been. Pinch gripes, when done correctly, can look yes. really good. But they can look bad. Yeah, if they're not done correctly, they can look bad. So... It's a nice looking jersey, but they could try harder. Yeah, there's, so, there's, there's good individual elements, but with it all coming together, it's, for me, it just doesn't work. So Leicester Riders will go lock that in, must try harder. Right, coming up next, we have the London Lions. We do indeed, and four kits to pick from here. So right. I'm thinking we start with the third and work our way up to Europe. Okay, so, so they actually bought out three jerseys. The third one, if I'm correct if I'm wrong now, this is the orange one, Dan. This jersey they bought out for the British Basketball League trophy final, that was the first time they wore it this season. Uh, it's, it's an orange jersey. Normally they go with their black and their white uniforms. I don't know what to think of the introduction to orange to their sort of colour palette. What are your thoughts? We know what I say about bad colours being good. I, I think this is brilliant. Yeah. I, well, I quite like, because it also links in with their away uniform, with the orange tinge. Yeah on the trim around the edge. Um, it works well because they haven't just plucked orange out of nowhere. Have a think about that one. Let's have a look at the next London jersey. The next London jersey is the away one. And again, this is the orange and yellow uh, trim, um, which is very nice. Uh, reminds me, actually, I'll tell you what it reminds me of. It reminds me of Bristol Flyers jersey from the COVID year when we had the sunset strip. Do you remember we had the orange and yellow trim like that? That was honestly one of my favourite jerseys. I'm not just saying. Like, a lot of people like it. You still see it in the in the crowd quite a lot, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so that is the away jersey. We've also got <coughs> the home jersey to look at. That's a classic black uniform, uh, white trim, black jersey. Um, there's also one more jersey to look at for London Lions because they've got four. Um, this is their Euro Cup jersey, which again is very similar to the home jersey. This one has LDN, though, on the front. I like this. The number sits above. It's got the Euro Cup logo on. I'm a big fan of teams bringing out jerseys just for European competition. I think that could be my favourite one of the lot. What do you reckon? Oh, my favourite is that one by far. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Um, and they've done so well in Europe this year. It's nice to see them doing what. What were they doing if they were away in Europe? Or they or they had? Did they always just wear they the wear, same they, one? They, 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 they did a. Um, they wear the white for jersey, the away jersey with the. They just put the Euro Cup logo on it. Nice. Okay. Uh, right. Let's get all four of those jerseys up onto our big board of madness. Uh, let's start with the home jersey, London Lions home jersey. Where's that going, Elliot? What do you think? Uh, as a Brooklyn Nets fan, I'd put that in nice, but to me, that's the worst of the four. I think it's too plain. Uh, it's too bang average for me. So we're in bang average yeah. on the London Lions home jersey. What do we think of the London Lions away jersey? Uh, orange trim, of course, on the sleeves. Um, white jersey, where's it going, though? It's, it's in nice. If that had the LDN... I agree with that. It could potentially that. be in the Louvre, um, but I just prefer that to the look. Either take out the LDN or take out the London Lions. Have one or the other, yeah. not both. Right. Uh, we've got London Lions uh, orange jersey, the alternate jersey to put into our lovely big board. Where's that one going? Now we're we're going to go that they did this on purpose, that it was orange, so that can be nice. Nice. Okay. 
We'll put that in nice because as well. Because it matched all the trophy colours and bringing out a jersey just for the trophy final, I think, is is good. We still haven't had anything go into uh, in the Louvre yet. We anything well, in the bin yet? We're just, about, we're just about to. Uh, and then we've got uh, the London Lions Euro Cup jersey. Where is this one going? This is in the Louvre. Put it wow. in the Louvre! It just works. The Place of sounds, sorry, sound. Place uh, of sounds! I, I wanted a French little sound there, but I don't have any, so we're going in the Louvre. Oui. Oui. <laughs> oui, oui. Uh, uh, mon uh, uh, C'est bon, magnifique. Pour l'île in the Louvre. To <laughs> FL. <laughs> so this one will go in. Yeah, it just works. The spacing on it, the LDN, the colorway on the trim. Yeah, it's just good. We have our first jersey being hung up in the Louvre, and that is the London Lions Euro Cup jersey. Congratulations! Um, there, there's a look at our leaderboard so far. We've got London Lions Euro Cup in the top. Uh, in nice, we've got Caledonia Gladiators home, Cheshire Phoenix away, London Lions away, Cheshire Phoenix home, London Lions alternate, and the Leicester Riders home. Bang average are our all-star jerseys in the London Lions home jersey. Must try harder. We have Caledonia Gladiators away and the Leicester Riders away uniform. Coming up next, what do we have, producer Dan? Well, it's time to go to one of Elliot's favourite teams, the Manchester Giants. Giants and their home jersey. Manchester Giants home jersey. Talk to me. What does that say in the middle? I haven't actually seen that before. So all the things going down are the uh, different towns of Greater Manchester. So it, for the listener here, we've got like a deep, I'm actually colourblind, so I'm going to get this wrong, but deep green. Yeah. yeah. A deep green coloured jersey, a Giants across the middle, quite big, written word. We've got the number underneath that. We've got the Giants logo just above that in yellow, which I think is really nice. This, what I like about this is the Giants, the number and the British Basketball League logo in white and then the kappa and the logo of and the Giants in yellow, yeah. which I think is really cool that matches the trim around the neck and the sleeve. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm a big fan of this jersey. Yeah. I, I like how it has a link to the city with the names faded in the sort of the pinstripes, the very faded pinstripes it has down the middle. It's, it's also got the B on the back, which is the... Uh, the bumblebee, the, yeah. Yeah, which is a symbol of Manchester. It's incredibly nice. There's one small detail which takes it away from being in the Louvre. Oh, no. It, What's that? Uh, which is those, the pinstripes of the wording. Need It's too spaced out in too big a text. It needs to be either smaller text or closer together. Let's oh, see, Dan. I'm having this close and in hand. It's a beautiful jersey, don't get me wrong, but we've got high standards to be in the Louvre. So there um, is, you, you can kind of vaguely see it if you're watching on YouTube, the, the names of the towns uh, going down the jersey from top to bottom. A bit too much spacing, in Elliot's opinion. I hadn't noticed that at all until then as well. I know I haven't spent ages looking at these kits, but that yeah, I do like the details, but you're yeah. right. Probably. This is one of my big things about jerseys for there, is the marketing around them. If you remember when I said about Newcastle Eagles last year, that they had an eagle which was imprinted into the, into the jersey and the shorts, and most people thought it was tribal. I love it when there's a story around Absolutely. the jersey that links back to your city. And I think when we're going back to NBA jerseys, this has taken inspiration from uh, LA Lakers City Edition, which uh, Magic Johnson did a little while ago, which had details like that down there. So, yeah, it's a really, really good jersey. Let's take a look at the Manchester Giants away uniform. And this one causes some controversy because it's obviously the opposite colours. Uh, but the opposite colour on this occasion is a bright yellow uh, Manchester Giants away jersey. Uh, the, the word Giants is still there with the number um, and all of the other details, including the Kappa logo, the British Basketball League logo and the Giants logo are in the dark green with dark green trim. Uh, also, there is the, uh, the, the, the font remains uh, of the local areas around Manchester down the uh, top to the bottom. I I'm going to put my hand up here and tell you right now, I don't know about the spacing and all that rubbish, but the actual colour I really like. I think they look amazing when they're playing in it. Do you? Yeah. See, I'm not I a do. massive fan of that, Ye but Ye obviously it's meant to divide opinion, <coughs> which is the whole point of these jerseys. They Yellow jerseys look incredible when playing basketball. I say it with a lot of jerseys. You you'll see it every time the NBA releases a new capsule. There'll always be people which say it looks horrible when actually, if you look at a jersey holistically, especially in NBA with the court, with the surroundings, when people are playing, that it just transforms on putting it on a white screen. When I first see a picture of it like that, that was my first look at it. I'd be like, oh, not sure about that. But actually, when you see it in person, when you've got it there, it's, it's, it, 
Giants have done really, really well on their jerseys this year. Yeah, really I, I agree, well. I agree. I think this might be our classiest set of jerseys. I really like the green and yellow, because they're not in your face green and yellow either. And I'm thinking, you're a golf fan, Sam. What? The green, the green and yellow, isn't it a bit Masters? Oh, it is a bit, isn't it? It's a bit Ooh. Masters, What's yellow and up? green. Oh. So, let's get our big board back up on the screen. And it's time for us to place Manchester Giants into our grid. Uh, let's start with the home jersey. Elliot, where are you putting the Manchester Giants home jersey? Top of nice. Top of nice. Oh, There nice. we go. It goes into there. And the away jersey, uh, this is uh, obviously divides opinions, but where are we putting the away jersey? I think it's just as nice. I think they're both, as a pair, needs to be right next to each other. Here we go. So Manchester Giants have been put into the nice category. Still nothing to put in the bin just yet here on the podcast, but there's still time. Uh, right, up next, uh, I've lost track on my notes, but who have we got next? Producer Dan, please. <laughs> well, we've got Newcastle Eagles up next. Here we go. So Newcastle Eagles home uniform. Uh, for the listener, this one's quite, quite got a bit of a busy background to it. It's a black jersey with white trim with the classic Eagles um, typography on the front. Uh, the new sponsor, Sirius Group, is uh, largely placed underneath. Number sits in the middle. It's got like a, a, a kind of gold Kappa logo, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, and the Newcastle Eagles badge is also on top of it as well. In the background of this, and again, I t- correct if I'm wrong, but it's like big V's. It looks like a bird feathers. Yeah, it feathers. is. So it feathers. is. So yeah, it looks like feathers. it's an eagle feather. So basically, it looks like the jersey. You are a big eagle. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, I want to give my opinion first. Looking at the jersey, what I want to do for some reason is I want to get rid of all of the numbers and writing and, and, and designs and logos. If I was just to look at it as the eagle, I think it's really nice. For some reason, there's something wrong, in my opinion, with the way the, the, the like the sponsors and stuff are laid out. Not sponsors, but like the t- names and all the rest of it. But I do like the actual design in the background of the kit. That's my opinion. You can tell me you disagree with me now. Go. I just can't get over how good that jersey is. Um, but do you know what? It's only when I've seen that picture on there that I've noticed that that's the Eagles feathers. That's only... uh, Which, again, takes me back to last year. Why are they not explaining this on media day to the people, to, to, to the general population? It's infuriating because that is an incredible jersey. And for someone to come up with that concept, even to the point where there's different shades of white and black on those feathers on each one to represent the the chest of an eagle. And I've taken that all from just seeing that picture there, yeah. and I've never known about that. I've seen Eagles play multiple times. I've seen those jerseys up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you want one now? Oh, I think there needs to be amazing. Yeah, I think there needs to be a better job around the storytelling of like why Absolutely. they've done certain things when they re- announced the jersey. Do you see what I mean? If there is a story behind your jersey and what why you've put certain things there. Like tell it, like explain it in a web story, exactly. Especially a video, with, whatever you need to do. Yeah, the talent of the content creators we've got, we've seen the stuff coming out now. Yeah, you know, there's going to be someone in every city where these clubs are that can do something. So get them in for a day, give them a jersey. Like that is an incredible design, and I, I was expecting to put the Eagles in the bin because it would have been such a step down from last year's jersey. Yeah. Now I've seen that picture, and I know what that jersey is. I thought it was just a geometrical pattern yeah now i've seen that close up <laughs> game changer well <laughs> let's uh, show me the uh let's have a look at the away eagles jersey and again this one does have the same pattern in it is very faint on this one now though i like the way how the word eagles pops better on this jersey than it does the home jersey I, on, on white i think it looks a lot better i know we've just talked about the sponsor and i'm sure they're doing a great job up there but i don't want the blue of the sponsor on the the smart white black and gold background yeah. I know, does, do you see what i mean like i almost want that to be the same color and that mm. takes it away uh, from the kit a little bit for me what do you think Some, sometimes the sponsors are, are like if, if they agree to do their logo in your club color guidelines i think it looks so much better so let's put our big board back up on screen let's put newcastle eagles onto the board uh let's start with the home jersey uh it wasn't until uh very la- very late in the day that elliot did see the feathers on the newcastle eagles home jersey and that has affected his decision on where to put the uniform uh, so are we saying originally it was going in the bin? Is that what you were suggesting? Uh, but before I came here, that was one of the contenders for it. Now I've seen it close up. That is the nicest jersey here. 
and also the thought process which must have gone into that the time that the designer took to make that is incredible that's what as as a journey connoisseur that's what i want to see people spending a lot of time in thinking up clever designs on jerseys and that's incredible that so, is amazing. So that's number one. Let's put in the French music what, now. Whilst I'm going on a little, like, <laughs> I need to calm myself now. I, I, that, to be honest, though, that's the first time I've got that excited over a British Basketball League jersey. Yeah, well, there that's, you go then. Yeah, that's good. So uh, Newcastle Eagles home jersey goes in the Louvre. How about the away jersey then? I know it's very similar, but I don't think it works as I well as being white. I don't think it works. It's still nice, and there's a lot of work gone into the concept, but... I think it's, to, to me, what that seems is an incredible amount of work has gone into the concept, into the home, and then gone, we've got to do it away too. So it's nice, but it's nowhere near the level of the home jersey. So uh, let's take a look at our big board so far. There's only a few clubs left to go. I think there's three clubs, four clubs left to go. There's a look at our big board so far. Uh, in the Louvre, we have Newcastle Eagles and uh, London Lions Euro Cup jersey. A whole bunch are sitting in nice, including the Manchester Giants jerseys, the Caledonia Gladiators home jersey, both Cheshire Phoenix jerseys, the London Lions away jersey, Newcastle Eagles away jersey, the Lions alternate jersey, and the Leicester Riders home jersey. Bang average, we've got our British Basketball League All-Star jerseys and the London Lions home uniform. And it must try harder, Leicester Riders and Caledonia Gladiators away. Well, here's uh, a look at um, <coughs> another jersey. Uh, three jerseys from this team, and that is the Plymouth City Patriots. Now, before I show you these, Joel, I just want you to keep your eyes on TJ Atwood's face. He might give you a clue as to how much he enjoys the kit that he's wearing. Here we go. We'll start with the third. And TJ Atwood is very happy to be sporting the teal colour uniform. I mean, he is one of my favourite players of the whole league this year. I think he's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's the he's... Charlotte Hornets jersey. It's even got the 15 of Kemba Walker. Again, it has the, the crest. It has the crest and it has the word Patriots and it has the sponsor and the number and the British Basketball League logo and the Kappa logo. Uh, does it look is it, could it be made simpler by removing the club crest? Yeah, it's just weird placement for me too. The Eagles one I thought was in the right place. Yeah. Above the British Basketball League. That just looks like a stamp after it's like yep that's past the quality control check it is a teal color the word patriots is in a white text across the chest uh, sponsor logo again is in the colors of the jersey big tick from me for that um the trim has a the dark blue trim on the teal um where are we putting this one must try harder in isolation it's okay but it's a big step down on last year's jerseys for them which had the triangle in faded yeah. color the other way around which were really nice jerseys for me that's too basic well let's take a look at the home jersey home or away down uh, we'll go for away next here's the plymouth city patriots away jersey again tj is still not impressed <laughs> he's very happy to be wearing <laughs> this one um it Do does it does look clean and simple but again it's it's, it's it's the same jersey isn't it just with different colors but again it's 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 a step down on last year's ones it's it's too plain for me. So have a think about where that one's going. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look at the Plymouth City Patriots home jersey. Uh, now, finally, we found TJ's favourite with this one. Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, he's happy now. He's happy with this one. I, I tell you what, now I, like I the, the color it's the colours for yeah. me. Yeah. I do yeah. very much like this. Is a very smart colourway on a jersey. Yeah. So uh, for the listener, this is a black uniform. It's got the uh, the the the. the the triangles are uh, in both teal and in white. Uh, I think also a darker black yeah, down the, the, from the elbow, from the armpit down no, to purple the bottom. As well. Is that purple yeah. as well? There's a purple yeah. in there too. A whole bunch of different colours. I think looks very cool. Yeah. Um, the, the sponsor logo is in the teal matching the, the club badge. And then the trim is like a blue and purple together. I think it's very, look, it looks very smart. It's, guys. Like, a, it's like a mid, it's, it's a midnight jersey, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Where you've got those. No, I know what you mean exactly. I, I know what I mean. No one else does. I am a huge <laughs> fan of a black jersey yes. and getting and and having a black jersey and then having your club identity come out in the trim rather than actually on the jersey. Massive big tick yeah. for me. Love it. For 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 the amount we give Plymouth, you know, slack. I do like the teal colour. I think it's a nice yeah. choice in their palette. You Look know? at you giving Plymouth compliments. Well, eh? I mean, Let's it's... clip this bit up for Instagram. <laughs> 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 gonna, it's time for us to put Plymouth onto the board. Uh, let's start with the uh, the teal as we uh, did first. Teal uniform for Plymouth. Where's it going? For me, it's must try harder. Must try because harder. Because it's a massive step down on last year's jerseys. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there we go. Plymouth uh, is Teal's uniform. Their third uniform is in Must Try Harder. Uh, let's talk about the away jersey. Same. Why have they got three? Uh, some teams do have three. Some teams do have two. I guess it's just a personal preference, really, what they want to do. This and one's... finally, the home jersey. I think this one is the nicer of the Plymouth jerseys. Where are you putting it, Elliot? Yeah, I've got that in nice. Nice. I think it all works together well. It, it's... It's not playing. They've, there's been more thought going to that one. Uh, next up on the Jersey rankings, we have the Sheffield Sharks. Yeah, thanks to Malik Green for taking this one around the back of the arena by the bins. <laughs> this is the. Uh, this is. The, I know exactly what this photo is. This is the uh, league reaching out to clubs and saying, oh, "Your your player missed media day, so can we please get a photo <laughs> of the player in a jersey with a neutral color background, uh, standing there in the jersey for broadcast reasons?" Uh, and so this is what they would have sent back to them. This is the Sheffield Sharks home jersey. Uh, for the listener, there are pinstripes on this jersey. It is black with blue. Pinstripes down the jersey. There is the yellow word mark Sheffield across the chest in block font. The number 45 for Malik Green sits below it. And then the sponsor, B. Braun, below that. Uh, there's another sponsor at the top right breast. And there is the British Basketball League logo on the other breast. My my opinion, I don't like the font of the Sheffield. Yeah, I agree. And the, and the 45. Um, the logos, that the sponsor logos, their sponsor, that's fine. But um, but I actually do like the colour pattern. I do quite like it. It's quite subtle, but um, I think it works as a pinstripe. That's just my opinion. Elliot, over to you, sir. I, I can't see the pinstripe. Well, there you go. Uh, Get it back up on screen, Dan. There are pinstripes on this jersey. That's what I mean. It's, it's quite. Black, I quite like it's, how it's black and dark blue. There's a black pinstripe and a dark blue pinstripe, and they're very faint. Uh, also, we have the Sheffield Sharks away uniform. Uh, this uh, is pushing the boundaries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Bruh. Here we go. Bruh. Come on now, dog. This is Come on, man. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh, for the listener there are pinstripes on this jersey it is a dark grey and we spoke about grey and silver earlier in the podcast Elliot what do you think of the Sheffield Sharks away jersey do you, <laughs> do you know what you need to do with this jersey <laughs> it's so bad <laughs> yeah I think we do <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here! Get out of here! So, I, I, it, what do you think, Elliot? Talk to us. <laughs> I don't need to say anything. It's so bad. Does <laughs> <laughs> it go into the bin? It gets even worse when you see it, like on the court. Like, I'm sorry. I, I know I'm probably going to upset a few people, but that's the worst jersey <laughs> I've seen in a long, long time. Is it supposed to be steel? That's what I was going to ask. Cause there, was there like steel industry in well, Sheffield? It probably steel. was. Steel City, isn't it? Yeah. I kind of want to steal that jersey Black and throw and it in the bin. <laughs> I don't know about you. Yeah, it's... <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Let's get our big board up. And we, first up, we've got the Sheffield Sharks away jersey. Where is this jersey going, Elliot? In the category below the bin. In the bin, <laughs> off, off the charts. Sam, play that fart noise for us, please. Put it in the bin. <laughs> Oh, straight in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we've got our first uh, jersey in the bin, and that is Sheffield Sharks away jersey. Uh, home jersey, let's discuss. For me, it's must try harder. It's the, I, I agree that the font doesn't match. It's potential. The color wave's good. Uh, the the yellow and blue. So the, it's, it's yeah. us being nice and saying it's not a bad jersey. It's just a good jersey executed in the wrong way. Excellent. Is what we're saying by this category. Must try harder. Here. Lovely. We were being very kind. <laughs> Two more. Two more clubs to go. And first up is the Surrey Scorchers. Let's have a look at the Surrey Scorchers home jersey. I can't see it, Joel. It's got camo on it. That's <laughs> why, mate. Hey, <laughs> oh, terrible. I see what you did there. Thanks, mate. I'm a big fan of the camouflage. It's very simple as well. If you look, it is a blue, like, and different shades of blue camo jersey. We've got Scorchers written across the centre with a number underneath. Obviously, Kappa and the British Basketball League um, sort of logo on there. Now, actually, I only just noticed this. The Scorchers logo is in similar colour palette to the rest of it, but in the top, top left breast of the player. But you don't really notice it. Yeah, it's good positioning for the logo. Uh, again, no, no, no principal partner sponsor logo on the front, so it does look very clean. Uh, Elliot. Let's discuss. What are your thoughts on the Surrey Scorchers home jersey? 
Nice. Nice. <laughs> and, but I'll also just add in, this is what happens when you get people that have experience designing jerseys to design jerseys. I know the person that designed it, and as soon as I saw it, it didn't surprise me at all. It's a very, very good jersey. I agree. I'm a big fan of the camouflage. I love the colours. It's on brand. Uh, it's on point. You don't often. It's something you don't often see with jerseys as well. Uh, have a think about where you want to put that one. In the meantime, let's take a look at the Surrey Scorchers away jersey. There is still the camouflage. You just can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and not for the good sort of camouflage reasons. Uh, the camouflage is very faint on this jersey. Uh, I, I'm a fan. This is Surrey Colours. Um, I, I'm not sure what I think about the white text on a light coloured jersey already. Mm. Like I, You could almost do like a dark colour there to make it pop out a bit more. What do you think? They could have used the colour in the back of the Scorchers logo that's on there yeah. as the as the writing as well. Do like you see what I mean? Dark blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I could see that. Or put a dark blue trim around a white text. Yeah, because you could. They, they could have also done three D text. Yeah, they could have done something with the um with the trims of the of the neck and the sleeves as well, couldn't they? Because that's all the same color. So I don't know. What do you reckon? What I do like about these is also that they seem to have done it all without any of the directive. So it feels as if they haven't had a template and then gone paint inside the color, paint inside the lines. Yeah. Um, but that, they're very. The problem I've got with those two jerseys is they're two similar colors. So, like, when they played the Giants this week, the Giants had to wear their away jerseys because there was a clash with both colours. I much prefer the home one. Um, the second one, I do like the colours, and it's Surrey Scorchers colours. So, it, it, it's up there, but the first one for me is is very, very good. Let's get our big board up on the screen. Let's start with the Herb, the Surrey Scorchers home jersey. Where is it going, Elliot? Where are we so putting it? For me, that takes the top of nice. Top of nice wow. for the home jersey. There we go. Very nice jersey indeed. And the away jersey for Surrey Scorchers is going... Takes the bottom of nice. Takes the bottom of nice. It's just a little bit better than its uh, brother, the All-Star jersey. So two nice jerseys going into uh, our uh, jersey rankings. Uh, nice is very populated. A lot yeah. of nice jerseys in the British Basketball League this season. Uh, one jersey that is in the bin. Uh, <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've gone through all the teams now, apart from one team. And this is the part where Sam and I be quiet uh, because uh, it's time for Elliot to rank... The Bristol Flyers jerseys. Um, where do we want to start on this one, Elliot? Should we start with the home jersey? Modelled by Tevin Ollison, our British Basketball League All-Star. No, Joel, can you bring up this season's one, not last season's one? Yeah. That, <laughs> did. I, I, didn't, I, didn't I was waiting have, for you to say this. I didn't even have to say anything. Um, that for me, this is a step down on last season's one. Mm -hmm. It's in, in isolation, it's a very nice jersey. It's not as good as last year's one. I can see the theme, the continuation of it. Doesn't fill me with as much excitement as last year's did. Uh, let's have a look at the away jersey. The away jersey was something a little bit different this year. Le cream soda, as see, I like to call it. Yeah, this picture really doesn't do it justice. Yeah, does I it? agree. I tell you what, I love on this jersey though is the red trim with the that, yeah. that's dark blue as well, isn't it? Yeah. Red and blue always Bristol Flyers colours. We haven't had red on the jersey in probably about two or three years. Um, and having the red introduced back is like classic flyers. It's what everyone mm. in the early British Basketball League days, we used to play red at home even, didn't we, in the British Basketball <laughs> yeah. League? Um, so I love having red on that jersey. It, so it, it pops, the, the trim pops, and obviously it looks good with the sort of coffee colour. I like the trim on the, the right in Bristol as well, in the red. It's just so pretty. Yeah, I think it pops. Uh, that is the Bristol Flyers away jersey. Uh, this is the moment of truth, Elliot, because it's time for you to put the Bristol jerseys into our rankings here. Now, we don't want you to be biased. We want you to be completely honest here. Where are the Bristol jerseys going for you? Home jersey yeah. is in must try harder. <laughs> Ooh, get him out! He's get him savage. out! Because I know the talent that we've got in Bristol Sport. And he's a savage. So he's put the home jersey in. Must try harder. Where are you putting the away jersey? Elliot? The away uh, jersey is in nice, and I will put it just ahead of the Phoenix home jersey, right there. There we go. So that completes our British Basketball League hooping and looting jersey rankings 
2024. Here's a look at your final standings. In the Louvre, we've got Newcastle Eagles at home. We've got the London Lions Euro Cup kit. A whole bunch of jerseys sitting in nice, including Surrey Scorchers home, the Manchester Giants jerseys, Caledonia Gladiators home, both Cheshire jerseys, the Flyers away jersey, London away jersey, London alternate jersey, <laughs> uh, Leicester home jersey, Surrey away jersey, and the Plymouth home jersey. Bang average, there's three uniforms sitting there both the all-star kits and the um london lions home jersey must try harder has a little bunch including sheffield sharks home the caledonian gladiators away and leicester riders away the bristol flyers home jersey the uh teal plymouth city patriots and the away plymouth city patriots and then in the bin we have the sheffield sharks away <laughs> kit <laughs> oh, sounds like, uh, yeah, there we go. I won't say what that sounds like. <laughs> there we go. Uh, do you agree with Elliot's jersey rankings? Uh, let us know. You can message us on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter. Let us know your thoughts. Tag us at Bristol Flyers, at N Luton. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Has Elliot got his jersey rankings right? Uh, if you want to leave a longer message, you can also email us hello at bristolflyers.co.uk and you can write all your thoughts down in, in more than 240 characters. There we go. Jersey rankings complete. Finally, we got there. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, I love that. Very much enjoyable. And it's so nice to have you on the podcast, Elliot. That's Thanks nice for coming. Producer right. Dan, uh, the jersey rankings are complete. We kept you busy this week, didn't we? You really did. My, my fingers are on fire. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you are enjoying the podcast, don't forget you can listen to us on all major podcast providers or you can watch us on YouTube. Make sure you share it with a friend. Like, comment and subscribe. Give us a rating and review. All those podcasts things that podcast hosts tell you to do um sam we've got to mention one more thing before we wrap up the show and that is next week you are away because you're going skiing yes i am traveling so, again so you are leaving me in the studio by myself so we've got one or two options we may take an easter break with the podcast or if i can find a great guest to have in the studio i may just run one without you well we'll see joel but probably you're not gonna end up doing one <laughs> Well, we'll see. It is a busy week next week, so uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, Elliot, thank you so much for joining us on this week's episode of the Bristol Flyers podcast. Thank you for your support. Uh, we will see you again very, very soon indeed. Uh, but for now, that's going to do it for this week's show from Joel, Sam and producer Dan. Uh, see you next time on the Bristol Flyers podcast powered by WebGains. <laughs>